Hello, and welcome to the Hello You Show, where we talk about big dreams and taking real action. Through transformative stories, a bit of neuroscience, and real conversations, this show is here to help you explore creating your next level life with authenticity and passion. I'm Jessica Rice, a design techie and former engineering leader turned vision evolution coach on a mission to help other women rise up and lead a life of purpose. So get cozy and say hello again to the real you. Welcome back to the Hello You Show. My name is Jessica Rice and I am your host for today. And today we have such an amazing and special guest. I am so pleased to have Jeanette Peterson joining us. Jeanette is a business strategist, faith mentor, and military veteran. She is a decorated Iraqi freedom veteran spending three and a half years overseas during her decade in the military. She holds certifications from industry leaders in cybersecurity, network engineering, and business operations. Today, Jeanette is a podcast host and speaker and is working toward empowering thousands of women to be unapologetic to who they are and what they were created to be and build unstoppable businesses from anywhere in the world. She helps women build empires with community, mindset, and business optimization while homeschooling her kids. She is the host of the Top 10% podcast, Unapologetically Unstoppable, Building Businesses with the Holy Spirit. I am just so pleased to have you, Jeanette. Thank you so much for coming on to the show and joining us. I know we've had some amazing conversations. Yes, I'm so glad to be here. Well, tell us again where you're joining from for those of us who may not know. I am, um, we're currently active duty. So my husband's active duty military. So we move quite often. And in January, we moved up to the Northern Sacramento area. So it's been great. We've been here and I think it's rained maybe 20 days since we've been here. It's, it's awesome. <laughs> and it's sunny, 78. It's cool, but not too hot. I love it up here. Well, I think you're lucky because you missed some of the rains that happened in the winter, this last winter in California, where it felt like we weren't in California at all. It was something very new for me. <laughs> <laughs> you were blessed in that. Yes. <laughs> well, I know before we dive into today's discussion, um, I just wondered, could you share with us, you know, just some about your background, the work that you do, how you serve? Yeah, so I started off in the military. I was in the military for like a decade, like you said, and I was doing a lot of IT work. So I did cybersecurity, which is basically like hardening of networks to make sure that hackers, it makes it harder for hackers. Nothing is unhackable, but to make it a little bit more like a hardening of the system so that way people aren't like letting people in, um, there aren't any like leaks of information. It's a lot of data management and data like control. And also it was, I started off in networking, which is like making sure that one computer can talk to another computer and they can share information. So, so it's a lot of in, in the computer kind of things and nothing like my email doesn't work. It's more like, okay, if your email doesn't work, it's probably this ones and zeros. And then when I got out of the military, it's kind of like a, who am I? Because I didn't know. I was just, I just knew that I, my identity was in my position. It was not in myself or in anything else. It was just like, who am I now? So I went on this like this journey of self-discovery and I, I discovered who I was and what that means and what I'm supposed to do in the world. And, and now I just want everybody else to feel that freedom of, I know exactly who I am. I know exactly why I'm created. My identity is not in the income or what I'm doing. It is all in Jesus. Right. And so I had to figure out what that meant because that was a new thing for me. I was not a walking with Jesus Christian. Like my dog tag said Christian, but I, he was like this guy I knew over there that, you know, saved the whole world, but I didn't really know who he was. So I, I wanted to help people figure out who they were. And along the way I found Jesus. And then I realized you don't know who you are until you find Jesus, like really know. So that was kind of like my journey. And I, I just, love business. So I can't stop talking about business and women and building big, bold businesses. And 
like screw the patriarchy like not in a like i'm a feminist way but kind of if that makes sense (laughs) well thank you so much for sharing number one and i think it leads perfectly into i know we were we've had some amazing deeper conversations too around this and i know that you've um been there for me and helped me with even discovering my journey as well in business and with Christ. And so I wanted to dive in a little bit more just on the heart of leadership, because I think that you are exemplary in this, in this path and and what that means to you. Um, So would you kind of share a little bit more, like, what do you, what do you feel like having a leader's heart um, is for you? Man, that was, um, a journey itself, right? So the first time I was ever a leader, I was the the general manager of a Jiffy Lube when I was 21. So I was like the only girl, the only person of color, and I was leading these dudes that were much older than me and how to change oil successfully as a well-oiled machine, right? And and then I didn't really know, I didn't have any leadership training, I didn't take any classes or anything. I just knew that I had to make all the numbers make sense, right? They give you all these dashboards, you have to have labor, costs, control, people, yada, yada, yada. So I was just trying to make the numbers work. I didn't know how to be a leader, I just knew how to make the numbers work. And so then when I went to the military, I was put in charge of other people and and I didn't realize that there's more than one way to be a leader. I thought it was just like, okay, I'm in the, this position, I have this rank, you have to do what I say or else you get in trouble. And so it was was like along this military journey of studying different leadership techniques and styles and like all the big people like Uncle John Maxwell and all these people. And I, I realized that being a leader is really about serving. It's really about empowering. It's really about helping. And I feel like sometimes we as leaders get what's the right word? It, sometimes there's this, this thing inside of us where we feel jealous or nervous that someone's going to take our place. And to be a true leader, you have to leave that ego and be like, if they are better than me, then I've done my job. If they can get farther than me, then I've done my job. Because it's not about you specifically. It's about the entire world getting better and growing, right? And so like when I have people come into my and I'm a business and they're on my team, I want to empower them to be the best version of them they can be, which means I'm going to challenge them, right? Which means I'm going to say things that they might not like to hear, but it's to challenge them as a person, right? I had one person come to me and she was complaining about her husband and she was saying how he wasn't doing this and this and this. And I was like, well, what have you been doing to help him? And she just looked at me like I was crazy. And I was like, but you have to also serve him. It's, it's gotta be symbiotic. It's not you're his slave or he's your slave. This is a relationship where you guys are growing together. And so like, even in business, like when I'm talking to different people in their business and they're becoming leaders, when they're making these quick snap decisions and they're not giving people enough information, they're not giving them enough like SOPs or know how and what to do, and they're expecting the world of them, but not telling them what the expectations are, and they're failing short of their expectations, I'm like, well, you didn't tell them anything. You didn't have the information. You didn't tell them what they're supposed to do. You weren't transparent with them. And you know that they might not know because like in in the industry, you can say that I'm a tech VA, which means you know how to do like connect an email, but that does not mean that you're a tech VA. But you can say that and people will just like, be like, oh, okay, that means you can do anything with tech, which is not true. But you have to like let them know exactly what your expectations are. You have to have milestones, KPIs, key po- key performance indicators, so that way people know exactly what they're what is expected of them, and what success looks like. So it's it's a really about like really dialing down who you are as a person and getting very specific and not even it's not personal. It's just business and being like, this is exactly what I expect of you. This is when I expect you to show up. This is what I need from you. And if you can't do it, this is what's going to happen. But not being being like too emotional about it. It's very not emotional. You know what I mean? Hmm. I mean, you're touching on all of my favorite things in the fact that it's <laughs> like you know, you know, there's there's the leadership side of things and how do we become better leaders? But then you're also talking about how do we look how do we even look inward to a greater extent when we're pointing our finger on all of these other, you know, scenarios or people in our lives where 
you know, we have these really high expectations. And I know sometimes when I'm working with leaders, they have high expectations of themselves because of deeply rooted things that might be in place from childhood or beyond, but they don't fully recognize it. And so then they start looking outward because they're thinking so poorly of themselves. So if I can do all of these amazing things that everybody else should already know how to do this as well. And so we kind of miss the mark there because we're, we're so focused internally, but not in the right ways. And I know you have this amazing background too. So you have military and I, I love that you're sharing about the Jiffy Loop. I'll have to share with my husband because his, one of his first jobs was like managing a Jiffy Loop thing. <laughs> um, but you also, you know, have a background where you, you worked in corporate, you worked at Booz Allen, you owned a successful marketing agency. And so I'm curious, how did you even start to like connect having like a servant's heart with how to be a great leader? Oh man. I think that took a lot of time because I thought leadership was, I'm the leader. I tell you to do this and you do this this way. And it was actually a relationship that I had with my husband. So my husband is, um, seven years younger than me, sometimes eight, depending on the time of the year, mostly seven. <laughs> and so like, he would say things like, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to do all these things for you. Don't you see it? And I was like, okay, let me like, not blame him for doing things, quote unquote, how I see is wrong, but like, really, like, what is he actually talking about? Like, does, like, what does that mean to him? Because his meaning of I'm trying to love you well might not mean the same for me, right? So then we went through the love languages and I was like, look, I don't like to be loved that way. This is how I like to be loved. And this is how I like to be lead. And then just like really understanding that I have to serve him in a way that he likes to be loved. And it's the same thing with people that are on my team, right? So part of that is I need to know who they are, how they work, how they like to get accolades, right? Is it they want a shiny trophy? Is it they want just a pat on the back? Is it they want to be lauded in front of people? But whatever that is, I wanna make sure that I do that so they feel appreciated in the way that they feel appreciated. So it's like serving them in the way that they need to be served, right? And like when it comes to my clients, I want to make sure that when it comes to operations and automations, they don't have to worry about it because there's so much stuff and it gets overwhelming for people where in my brain, it's very easy. And so I'm like, okay, if this is hard for you, let me figure out a way to take this off your plate. Let me figure out a way to serve you well. So that way you don't have to worry about things because my love language is acts of service. So I know that if I'm doing something for somebody else, they should feel good, right? If somebody comes in my house and they do my laundry, I'm going to love them forever. Like it's just going to happen. So like getting into the Bible and like looking at the Bible is like my, my waypoint for a lot of things. And it's always on my desk. I've got more than one. Right. And so like I was reading in second Kings and second Kings is talking about, um, Solomon and he's a King and he's like trying to serve and he's trying to do all these things. And he's trying to just be a really good King. And then there was David after him and David was the one with Goliath. Right. And so David was like, all right, so I'm doing this and I'm doing this and I'm doing this. And he was trying to like win Solomon's love. And, and I was just watching like from like, obviously 3000 foot view and it's a Bible story. Like I was just trying to watch him and see like, what is he doing? Like, is he, is he building this because he loves God or is he building this because he wants to make himself famous? And then I realized he was doing a lot of things because he just wanted to be helpful. It had nothing to do with any place that God was going to elevate him to. He wasn't doing it for, for the, for the clout or anything else. He was just trying to help. And, and so that's what it really comes down to is, am I trying to help or am I trying to make money? Because if you're trying to help, the money will come. But if you're just trying to make money, I was watching Matilda yesterday. That guy was just like making money because he wanted to make money and be rich and look cool. You got to like, it's got to be like a whole mind thing. It's got to be like a heart posture. It's got to be a, a full persona personality change of, I want to do this because I feel led to help people. And these are my gifts and I want to spread these gifts. And I want to make sure that everybody that, that comes in contact with me, um, grows. And that's really where it comes from is, is the Bible and trying to be more like Jesus. Jesus was a servant. I want to be more like, like Jesus. Hmm. Well, I think this is, I mean, this is such rich thought in the sense that you're combining the five love languages with, with leadership, which immediately goes to my mind in the sense of, you know, 
leadership strengths, different personality strengths that each of us possess. And now you're tying that back to to those love languages, which I think is is really brilliant and, and can be really helpful when we're thinking about the relationships that we carry both in business and outside. And then of course, I love that you, you're you tying in the scripture as well. And so as I'm thinking through this, like you're talking about really this way that we can start to have a model for ourselves when we're thinking through, you know, what I want to show up as. And I think that was really true for me too, even in my own leadership, where when I was promoted from manager, even more so into to director level positions, it started to even become more clear to me that I didn't want to just like spend so much time proving myself. And it really shifted for me in terms of how I wanted to uplift and support my team. And I think a lot of leaders sometimes are so busy on wanting to make money because we think that's the, the direction that we're supposed to go. But even in, you know, in corporate or whatever, where if we can shift our perspective a little bit more into how do we, how do we really truly lead with a servant's heart and provide for the people around us, then it becomes less about us and it naturally just starts to fall into place. Which is what I think I'm hearing from you. <laughs> yes, I, I agree. Like it's just so much easier. And I feel like the best leaders helped me grow and it wasn't just about them. So mm -hmm. like when I'm able to grow and I'm, I'm tested and people are giving me more things and, and working and see in me what like potential, right. Then I feel lifted up. I feel valued. I want to work with them. I want to work harder for them. And, and that just translates to a better team. That's going to be more loyal. That's going to be there for you that, that wants the best for you also. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It just makes it so much easier. I'm not like trying to gain like, um, Oh, what's the word gain like clout with these people because of what I can do, but I'm trying to gain clout with them because I love them and I actually care about them as a person mm -hmm. instead of just a number. So I think that makes a huge difference. Mm -hmm. Well, I just was curious too, you know, like how do you feel then that God has placed on your heart, the direction for your business and how did you know to listen to that? Oh man. So there's in second Kings, there's a story where, um, let me just pull it up because that'll just be easier because, and basically I was reading this and I was like, okay, this is, this is like me. So when I first got out of the military, I was like, all right, I can continue on my path of making a lot of money, which I was going to, but I was also like, I feel like I'm supposed to work for God in some capacity. And so the first thing that my mind thought was, I'm going to go work at the church and I'm going to be the best person. And I'm going to volunteer and do all these things. And that's not really what God asked me to do because then I was not using the gifts he gave me. Cause if I'm not using the gifts he gave me, what's the point? Like somebody else can like greet people at the front door. Like you don't have to have a techie complex brain in order to do that. And so I was thinking that I had to do all these things for God in order for him to love me because that's kind of how it has always been in my, my regular life. Right. And so in second Samuel in chapter seven, um, he's David, the King David is talking about like, I'm going to make a house for God. And he's talking to Nathan, who's a prophet. And he's like, all right, I'm going to make a house for God. God has been walking around in this tabernacle for all these years. I'm going to, I'm going to make him a huge house because I'm finally King and I can do that for God. And I'm going to do this for God because I love God, but God never asked him for that. And so God says, thus say the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture. This is verse eight from following the sheep. You should be prince over my people, Israel. And I've been with you wherever you went and have cut off all your enemies from before you. And I will make, for you a great name, like the name of the great ones on earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel and will plant them so that they may dwell in their own place and be served no more. And violent men shall afflict them no more as formerly from the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel, and I will give you rest from your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house. When your days are fulfilled and you lie down with your fathers, I will raise up your offspring after you. So he's like, I didn't ask you to build me anything. Okay. In fact, I'm going to build you something. And so I had to like really sit with the Lord and be like, okay, God, if you gave me all these gifts and you want me to do all these things, 
how am I supposed to do that? Right. And I feel like it's a constant journey of being like, I have all these gifts. What am I supposed to do with them? Am I only supposed to work with Christians? Am I not supposed to work with Christians? Can I work with anybody? How am I supposed to sh share that I am a Christian online? And, and actually the other day I was like talking to God about this and I was like, my target audience is not the typical income level of a typical Christian. Just facts. Okay. And so I was like, so what am I supposed to do? And he was like, look up Myron Golden. And I was like, okay, Myron Golden. He's like this super rich business leader. That's like helping Christians. He talks about the Bible all the time. He's always talking about scripture. And then I realized he's not just helping Christians. He's not denying his faith. He's saying, this is what I'm using for my business. This is how my business works. You are welcome to come over here and get this knowledge, but I'm, I'm a Christian and you're just going to have to deal with that, whether you want my services or not. And so I was like, I can still do exactly what I'm created to do, how I'm created to do it with the gifts that God has given me without feeling like I have to be in a box because I feel mm -hmm. like a lot of Christian nanity is like, you have to be like this, especially being a woman. I felt like, okay, well, maybe I'm supposed to just sit at home and homeschool my kids and bake sourdough all day and like be boring be a little crunchy. And I was like, this sucks. Like, I don't like this. This is not what I want to do with my life. And so, although I still bake sourdough, I still homeschool my kids. I'm building a business because I feel like that's what God has called me to. And I refuse to let man or any person tell me that I can't do both because God told me to do both. And so I'm going to just go back to his word. And if it doesn't align with his word, then I can be like, okay, maybe I shouldn't be doing that. Like, Maybe I shouldn't be watching Real Housewives all night long. Like I don't do that anymore. But like, honestly, if I'm just following in his steps and just asking him constantly and being in prayer, like throughout the day and asking him what he sees and like being in the word, knowing what the Bible says, then I can just live my life as free as I want to and not be subjugated to people saying you're a Christian, you can't do that. And I don't care. Like, I feel like if I worry about what they're saying to me, then I'm not worried Then I'm, I'm more worried about what they're saying versus what God has been telling me to do. And then I fall short when it times to go to heaven. And I don't want to fall short when it's time to go to heaven. I don't care what people say. Like, it just doesn't matter to me anymore. You're bringing up so many wonderful things because I think these were all of the questions that I had. <laughs> I think I've even come to you where I was like, I don't know how to, I don't know how to blend all these worlds of mine together. And yet so desire to, to feel aligned. And yet in the areas that, that I think make sense. And so I think you're talking about the fact like it's, there is this misconception that I think that number one, women, Christian women specifically have to have a specific look. I feel like the trad wife, a phenomenon that's happening is is a part of that and and yet there's so many of us who are like we don't prescribe to that we don't subscribe to these ideas of of what we're supposed to be and in fact it's quite the opposite i think of what god would want for us to be in terms of powerful and empowered and authentic women and so we're showing up in a different way and i think it's rocking a little again maybe a few boats but also denying denying our faith isn't also in alignment with what we want, are here to do. And so finding that intersection, I think has been, number one, you're so inspiring. And number two, it's it's a challenge sometimes because for a long time, it was almost like, at least for me, it was like death to my business. If I saw oh, yeah. I, you know, <laughs> proclaimed like I'm, I'm a Christian. And I think more and more it's starting to become less of an issue in the sense for me and, screw it. If you don't like it, then here I am. I'm not here trying to, to be anything other than who I am and what God has called me to be. So I'm curious, you know, how do you feel then that God helps you with directing your business? I think you touched on that a little bit, but we'd just love to hear a little bit more on like how you are continually looking for that within, you know, your guidance and what you feel within you um, and how that, you know, affects the trajectory of the decisions that you make. So there, there's a couple things. There's one thing that I do, it's called the faith method. And it's like a seven day, like fasting and asking and prayer kind of thing that I do with a group of ladies. Um, it's almost like once a quarter, I think we're gonna do another one in October. And it's really just 
asking God, like, what is the next step? Because I, I feel like sometimes we get paralyzed and we're like, I want to make God happy. I don't want to get this wrong. And so that's where I was sitting for a long time of being like, I, I want to make God happy. I don't want to get this wrong. I don't want to make him upset. But I think this is where I'm supposed to go. But I don't know because I don't have like this neon sign telling me this is which way to go. And so, but there's also this thing of God, trust me, right? And it says like, if I'm constantly looking for him, constantly praying, constantly in my Bible, doing the things that a good quote unquote Christian does is like seeking after him, then my steps will align with his. So I had to get out of my head and be like, I'm just going to move. And if I move, then God will move with me. Like, like it says in, in the Bible where he's there in the desert, they're in the, the Moses times and they're like going for the, the promised land. And they're like trying to cross the Jordan River. And God was like, you need to step out into the river before I can stop the river. So they had to like physically go and step in first and then he moved. So like, we have to like be in motion. Mm -hmm. He can't help us and guide us if we're not in motion, right? It's almost like we're, we're a boat with our sail up. If we don't have our sail up, then we're not gonna go anywhere when the wind starts blowing. But if we have to be ready, we have to be like in action, ready to go. But if we're not ready to go, he's not going to help us move. So it's like, let me just make the first move and then God will redirect me or direct me. He'll put wind in my sails, whatever that is, because I thought that I had to wait for his direction. But really, I have to be confident that he's going to show me the next step. It's not like I have to wait for the next step. I have to be confident that he's going to show me the next step. And if I get it wrong, he's not going to be mad. As long as I'm not being disobedient, where he's like, clearly, you know, don't go sell X, Y, Z package. If he clearly says that, then just don't sell that package. But if you're like, all right, these are my gifts. I'm going to go and try and sell this, this package to this business and this business and this business and just trusting that God's going to open those doors or not, because that's, that was a scary thing. And then also just constantly being like with an ear of listening and being like, okay, what is God telling me? What is the reoccurring theme that I'm seeing? And I'm I'm a person that sees numbers a lot. This might be a little woo, whatever. And I see like ones a lot, a series of ones. And I see a series of one, two, three a lot. And I was like, this it was this past week. And I was like, God, what do these ones mean? Like, I don't know what this means. I was Googling, like, what do these angel numbers mean? Blah, blah, blah. And like, I was like, I don't know if that's really it. And then at church on Sunday, it was like, um, Luke 11, one. And I was like, okay, there's another series of ones. Like, what is this? And it was talking about prayer. And I haven't been praying as deeply as I had been before lately. And I had been feeling the call to pray more. And I was like, okay, God, I hear you now. Now I know what you're trying to say to me. You're trying to tell me that I need to be in more prayer with you and more in communion with you. Okay. I get it now. And I haven't seen the one since I came to that realization. But like just being aware of how God talks to you, right? And so God talks to you through scripture. He talks to you through other people. He talks to you through um, sermons, confirmation. He talks to you through numbers, um, reoccurring themes, and just being aware and just like having your antennas out for his direction and having your antennas out for what he could be saying through other people and just being open to it. I feel like a lot of times we're like, no, that's weird. That's a little too woo for me. I can't handle that. It's a little weird. But like, hey, I feel like that's how God works. <laughs> no, I love that you brought that up too. Because I think, you know, knowing a little bit about my journey too, it's like coming from the other end and then trying to figure out like, what does all this mean? And not necessarily divorcing it, but just having a greater understanding of what's actually happening in my life. And maybe not again, subscribing to all of the other explanations that are out there, but really leaning more into scripture and what he, what he is actually trying to say. And I think that's a really excellent reminder for all of us when we feel conflicted in our hearts and in our souls about some of the things that we might be a part of or doing or, or listening to, and it doesn't quite feel right. Even if it's the loudest voice that you're hearing, sometimes it's the quieter voices that we need to pay attention to. So I'm wondering too, I know that you're saying, you know, God is speaking to you in all of these different ways and you're leaning in. And I love that you mentioned, you know, just having the faith, having the faith to step out first and then the, the rest of it will start to come along because I think that is 
the thing that we're called to do. And yet it's the scariest thing to do okay. to have the faith <laughs> to step out because we want to see the sign first and it's just not how it always works. Um, so what are some of the breakthroughs that you've even seen within, within your own business and helping and working with other people that even further solidifies this journey for you? So I started a podcast because God told me to, like it was, I, I'm by nature, I'm a very shy person. I don't like have a whole bunch of friends or anything like that. So like when God told me to make this podcast, I was trying to enlist anybody and everybody to do it with me. And then when I finally did the podcast, I was like, okay, God is clearly telling me that I need to do this by myself. So I'm going to do this by myself. And so like the fruit that's come from the podcast, meaning I've had people, I, I love hearing other people's stories, but I've had people be blessed by people's stories. People come to me and be like, yo, I listened to this person come on the podcast and it just meant so much to me. I want to talk to her. Can you like connect me with her and, and stuff like that. And I'm like, this would have never happened had I not even tried to go out on a limb and do this podcast. And then like people will find me on the podcast. They'll, they'll bring people to the podcast. They'll offer me speaking opportunities. It's just, it's just one of those things where I never thought that I would do this thing. And I was faithful and like trying to do it. And it's constant. Like I do it every single week. It's, it's nothing that I, I pretend like it's not important. It's the most important thing in my business. And I feel like that's the one thing that God has continually brought people through and to help me serve greater and better. And so mm -hmm. that, I think that that is really it. When he tells you to do something and you do it and you're consistent and persistent with it, then God will bring the fruit no matter what that looks like. If it's financial or even blessing somebody else, I feel like that's great. Mm -hmm. Well, I think those are really wise words and I love your podcast, Unstoppable, Unapologetically Unstoppable. So I know you also have on your website, you also have another, a lot of amazing tools that people um, who are seeking additional support or ways to reach out to you. Can you tell us a little bit how they can contact you, what your website is? Yeah. So my website is JeanettePeterson.com. And in a couple of weeks, I'm actually running a program to help you get seven figures in your business in the last couple of months, because I feel like there's a lot of people in people's pipelines that they don't even know if they're qualified. So let's figure that out. Let's figure out if they're qualified, what their revenue like marker is for you in your business, how much they're worth as a, as a lead. And let's like, get into that and like really map your business around getting more money through the pipeline you already have. If you're running ads, this is perfect for you. Okay. And then, um, that's at JeanettePeterson.com slash systems workshop. And I'll give that to Jessica. So that way she can put it in the show notes. And, uh, there's a heat map over there to see if your business is on tap for a seven figure figure business. There's all sorts of tools that will help you with your business and really organizing it from the inside to have that foundation. So that way you can scale to seven figures and beyond because what got you to six figures is not going to get you to seven figures. You got to organize it a little bit differently. So I'm very excited about that. Mm. Well, that sounds excellent. I know that as a business owner, it is completely overwhelming and like drinking from a fire hose and nothing like <laughs> even being in corporate because now you get to do all of it and <laughs> learn so many other things that you never knew before. <laughs> um, and so we'll definitely put all of that into the show notes. And then you said that's happening in October timeframe. Is that correct? Yeah, uh, the end of September, September 23rd. End of, end of September. Okay. We'll definitely get that out. And so that everybody who would like some help with their business can, can join. I know it's, uh, you're incredible. You have so much wisdom when it comes to that and tools and systems to really make it so much easier and more streamlined, which I think every person needs in this yeah. life, <laughs> myself included. Right. <laughs> it's, a, it's unending sometimes. I just, I'm like, okay, I'm learning something new today and I'm having a good attitude about it. <laughs> So, so I was wanting to know, you know, if, as a kind of final message to, um, what would you share with those, you know, who, who are looking to bring God greater into, into the work that they do into their hearts and how, you know, how they can really develop that servant heart and leadership. And maybe they're just feeling a little bit unsure or uncertain, or even if it's the right move for them, would you have any words of encouragement for them? I feel like if they're, if they're having that, that 
that tingle, I'll say like this tingle of like, I feel like I should be doing this, but I'm scared to, that's your invitation. That's your invitation from God to just show up bigger and bolder and watch him move. And there's, there's a whole community of women out there that are going after God and business. Like it's not, you're not alone. Like reach out to me, talk to me. We can, we can get you in community because it is not easy to do it alone. And when other people pray for you and believe in you, you might need to borrow some of that faith. You might need to be like, Hey, Jessica, I'm, I feel like God is telling me to do this and I, I need help believing for it. And she's like, no, you're awesome. You're amazing. And just like pouring into you, then, then that helps you also believe for bigger and for more because God is the God of abundance. He doesn't want us to be poor. He doesn't want us to have lack. And, and that's what you're feeling. You're feeling that lack and he just wants to pour into you. So find me, find a community, find people who are like you, which is very hard to do. And you probably won't find that at your church, to be honest with you, because they're more of the, um, the stay at home mom type. I don't know, but just bring it out. Just be bold about it. And the people that love you are going to love you. The people that are waiting for you to say those things are going to comment and, and like you. And the people that don't, they're not going to say anything because they're out there talking about whatever they talk about anyways. And they're big and bold about it. So why can't we be big and bold about our faith? I feel like we need to. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for sharing that. And I think that's a perfect description, that little tingle inside, because sometimes it's really hard to describe that. <laughs> what's, on, what's going on inside of me right now? Um, but, you know, and the other thing that I think has come forth to in conversations with you and, and other women that I've gotten to know more is that we are not alone. And there is so much more out there. I think that we've just been silent for yeah. a long time. Oh. Yeah, I think there's a we're on the precipice of a of like a revival in women that are going to be loud and proud and out there and doing it their way and not the way that is traditional. And it's going to make a lot of people uncomfortable. But mm -hmm. the only way that we can continue to be big and bold is if we know the truth, which is knowing our Bible and being like, no, scripture says and being able to combat that because sometimes it's hard. Yeah. I, I agree. I, I don't think that we're called to be m meek and mild and yeah, no. submissive. That's a different <laughs> conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing with us and speaking the truth and sharing what's on your heart and what I think God has put you out here to do um, in a bigger and bolder way. Thank you so much for having me. This has been great. Well, thanks so much for, for joining us today. Um, please reach out to Jeanette. We'll put everything within the show notes so that you can find her and connect with her and talk to her about any of the questions that you might have as well. She's been an incredible resource for me as well. And please stay tuned for next week when we have another amazing episode. Thank you for tuning in to the Hello You Show. It's been a pleasure to have you with us on this journey today. If you found value in our conversation and want to support the show, please take a moment to like, follow, and subscribe so you never miss an episode. We'd also deeply appreciate it if you could leave us a review. Your feedback not only helps us grow, but also enables others seeking inspiration and authenticity to discover our community. Until next time, keep embracing your story with purpose.